I remember like uh, when I started my own uh, journalism career, which was like 13 or 14 years ago, I completed my uh, course and, I, and I, the first job uh, I got was with Linux for You magazine. So I had like, for the day one, I have been an open source journalist. Uh, back in those days, one of the challenge was that uh, we had to go out and educate companies that why you should use open source, what are the benefits. But now uh, almost everybody is using open source. The question is who is not using and why not? So the new challenge that we see is that uh, these new users of open source don't actually understand how the open source process actually works. That why you should send your developers to, to, to events or why they should you know contribute in their office time. So, so uh, since you have been involved with for so long and you deal with a lot of customers and clients, do you see this pattern there where companies don't understand? Yeah, I, th I think I, I think so. I mean, I think, uh, let me say that, I mean, I think at the start, you're absolutely right, which is, is that um, one of the good things that's happened with open source is that most enterprises now have an open source, open source first strategy. And so anytime mm -hmm. they're doing a technical evaluation, they, they need to also look at what options are available open source. And so that level of corporate sort of, uh, sort of top down sort of, hey, this is an important part of business strategy and should be considered, I think is very good. Um, I think that, um, uh, businesses are very good at taking care of themselves, right? And and so, I mean, that's kind of the nature of, of a commercial entity at some level. Um, and so I think that people are very much like they appreciate all of the benefits of open source, right? Because open source allows you to sort of, um, uh, you know, protect yourself, uh, yourself against uh, uh, lock-in, the ability to extend the product um, if you need to, um, the ability to, um, you know, just solve a problem if you can't get someone else to solve it for you because it's super important to your business. Um, and so I think that a lot of people um, appreciate that uh, part of open source when they're looking at it from a commercial um, organization's perspective. Um, I think that people don't really understand how it works. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, is, and, and I think there's two parts to that, right? First of all, realistically, if you look at most, of, well, I don't know if it's most, a large number of Apache projects um, that have been started in the last five years or so um, are um, developed probably um, maybe 70, 80% of the development time that goes into those projects is by one or more companies that are directly benefiting from um, the success of those open source technologies, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a form of sort of um, paid, open, uh, pay, paid open source or, or, or sponsored open source, right? Um, and so um, the idea that all open source is done by people who, you know, in their free time in the garage, it's not true for a lot of these projects, the no. super successful projects that are being a lot of options. Not to say that it, it does exist. There's definitely cases where it, it, it's been very successful. Um, and so, um, and so my, my perspective on it is, is that, uh, that if you think that in that, in that context, it's not going to be realistic that every organization is going to be able to invest, um, developer time directly against, um, uh, adding new features to open source projects. But I actually think that the, the, the lower, the, the sort of easier win for most organizations um, is, is that they can contribute to the quality of open source projects, right? So um, making sure that you are reporting back things that you see and collaborating to fix them and probably helping out to fix them sometimes um, is I think what would be the goal I would first say is, should be a goal for most enterprises using open source software is, is that right. um, if you're benefiting a lot from this, um, find the time to um, help with quality. I think that realistically, most organizations, unless they have a really important feature that they need, are not going to be able to contribute the amount of time that it takes to build something um, from scratch. Um, but they can definitely improve the product. Um, and that is through both providing bug reports, but also, um, where possible, trying to allow people a little bit of time to help um, fix things. And so it's actually a funny situation that just happened very recently. Is we had a customer who found an issue with our product um, and then it turned out that it was actually an issue with an open source library that we were working on. Um, and so the customer actually went and patched the open source library um, themselves uh, uh, because uh, I think that the engineer was like, hey, I, I see what's going on here and, and, I, and I think I can fix this. Um, mm -hmm. And so I uh, fixed it uh, and then we were able to incorporate it faster uh, and, and give it back to them. Um, and so uh, that's, that's a nice thing when it happens. Um, we, as, sort of, as people are driving open source, you can't expect that to happen very often, but it's really nice when it does, and, and, and I think just to embrace that. Right. Uh, the, the way uh, I've talked to a lot of people, the way some people sum it as that, you know, if uh, if you are consuming in open source, there are two ways you can contribute. One is either through currency or through code. And as you rightly mentioned, that not a lot of companies do have develop, developers' resources that they can actually invest. 
So either, you know, they sponsor project or, you know, when they work with a vendor who, uh, who, who is kind of, you know, uh, uh, either maintaining or contributing to the upstream. So they are indirectly, you know, kind of through currency supporting that work because you are working with a vendor, that vendor is, as you gave example, that, you know, he patched, the developer patched, so you are giving feedback to that vendor, and that vendor is putting all those changes to upstream. So I really don't think that, you know, if you are uh, touching open source in any way, unless and until you are just taking the whole code, forking it, uh, running it in your own fork, then you are creating a lot of technical debt, you know, then you will not even survive, no point in you. But I think if you're consuming open source, you are going to help open source in one way or the other. There is no escape. You will be working with a vendor who will help. So that's, I think that's a neat thing people don't understand, but uh, it, it happens. Yeah, you give no, a very I, good I, example I there, I, yeah. I think, I think you're right. And I think the other thing that it's interesting, because one of the things that Apache really focuses on is community over code. Um, mm -hmm. which people yes. who are not familiar with is, is, is probably a little bit strange when they hear it. But it's the idea that um, uh, the success of a project is, um, is driven more by the community that's working on the project and their collaboration and consensus and driving towards sort of good solutions than it mm -hmm. is about one piece of code. Um, and so we actually talk about, and in many cases, there are PMC and or committers to projects that don't write code. Right, they right. may provide documentation, packaging. They may um, just help out a lot in testing, um, and so um, I think it's very important to appreciate all of those things. And that's actually something to go out to people who are using um, open source as well. Is is that even if you can't sit down and be a developer that's going to write the next feature or fix this bug, um, that doesn't mean you can't add value to open source and help those communities out. And in many cases, um, uh, those things are actually sorely missed in those communities. Is is that um, you've got developers that are happy to write code, but are less comfortable writing documentation. Or, um, right. And so if someone else could come in and say, hey, here's a couple of quick starts or a tutorial, um, that can help out a project a lot. Right. So if, if there is a company, I mean, you did give example where, you know, if there's a company who's using uh, open source and working with, you know, a vendor or something like that, who, uh, and the company itself, they don't have developed, they're a small startup, you know, a small company, they don't have enough developer, they can just, or I mean, when they don't have developer, they cannot even become part of the community uh, to go in there. And, so how can they uh, realistically contribute even even a, a bit? What are the what are the options, you know, since you have been in the community for so long, what are the what are the kind of, you know, opportunities, opportunities for them to participate without creating it as you know that oh why should we even bother with that we can just pay somebody and be done with it but how can they get involved well I think, I think going back to what I was saying is is that it's it doesn't have to be a developer that's writing code uh -huh. right um, uh, if you have a person who's using your product like use cases is a good example so one of the challenges exactly. that open source people have is is that they want to figure out ways to test their product. And so right. they can come up with all sorts of unit tests and synthetic data. And I work in data a lot, right? So you're always coming up with synthetic data sets or examples of potential problems. Um, customers can sometimes, depending on where they are, share their use case um, and share details yes. of their yes. use case. Um, and that can help people. So that can help the customer because it means that the open source project can incorporate that set of use cases into the test suites that are run every time someone does a release. Um, but it also, uh, so that helps out the users, um, but it also helps out the community because the product can be better. The, qual the quality of the project can, can improve. Um, and so that's, that's one example, but there are many examples of, hey, come in and tell us what you're doing. Tell us, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what's good with the product, what's not good. Remember that people are, many people are volunteering on the project. One of the key things, right, is, is that Apache, while there are many people who are paid to work on Apache projects, the relationship to the Apache project itself is something that is a person um, to to the to the um, the um, uh, chair of organization, right? Um, so it, it's that relationship that actually defines what they can do. And so while they may be being paid by someone because that person is very interested in in, in adding certain features or functionality to an open source project, the relationship is a personal one. And so um, that that person at the end of the day is the one who's actually making that commitment. And so. Um, uh, if you come into a community, um, uh, appreciate those people for what they're doing, uh, where they're giving their time, and, and when they're spending their time, and what they're caring about. Because uh, open source development, while it may be in many cases paid, is still something you have to be passionate about um, right. in order to do a good job in the community. And so mm -hmm. uh, coming into the community and saying, hey, these are the things that I've learned. These are the things that don't work well. Um, these are all really good things to do. Uh, say, hey, here's here's some documentation. I just wrote up a little, you know, I wrote up a short short thing about how we do our use case and and, and you know 
uh, how we use the product to do that use case, do a little video. Um, all of those things are very helpful to open source and can be done by anybody that doesn't have to be done by someone who's developer. Right, and it, it doesn't cost anything. You're just sharing your, but yeah, that's a very, uh, I was talking to somebody uh, a few weeks ago at DockerCon and uh, when I asked, his, his, his thing was like, the biggest challenge for us is that, because they're fully open source project and they're like, I, I, I mean, we wish that our customers will just, you know, just tell their story. We don't want anything else. Just come out and tell that you're using our product, how you're using it, what problem you face, how you solve them. You go ahead, download from our GitHub, we don't care, but at least tell us the story. That will help a lot in Mindshare and, you know, developers to get feedback. Yeah, that's, that's excellent, you know, uh, point.